2.6 here, guys. We're going to start looking at uh, solving absolute value inequalities. We spent a lot of time in the last chapter looking at absolute value equations. And today we want to take that concept and, and move it over into um, relating it to inequalities. So uh, the central question here today, how can you solve an absolute value inequality? In order to answer that question, we need to be able to solve absolute value inequalities and use absolute value inequalities to solve real life problems. So, let's jump down to the vocab here first and ask ourselves some questions here. Um, what is an absolute value inequality? How about a volunteer to read that for me right here? Absolute value inequality. Volunteer to read that for me, please. Thanks, Lauren. Okay, an inequality that contains an absolute value expression. We might have things that look like this today. Uh, absolute value of x plus 3 is maybe greater than 6. Okay. The absolute value expression is on the left. We have a greater than sign, therefore an inequality. That's what you're going to see today. Then we're going to talk about this idea, which is a little new for us. You guys remember those questions yesterday you asked, said, uh, what's mean deviation? Do you remember that yesterday? Okay, this is going to kind of come back and, and, and uh, surface today. That was a setup for what we're going to deal with today. Absolute deviation. Basically, it says it's the absolute value of the difference of x and a. Sorry about that. And a given value. So basically, the absolute value is, is really going to be x minus some given value. And we'll talk about what that means here. But what you really need to know here is the following. You need to know this formula right here. If you ever see absolute value, or I'm sorry, absolute deviation, we're going to refer to this. So that'll be pretty important. You may want to highlight that. Okay. A couple things to recall here quickly from chapter one. Absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 7 right here. Help me recall how to solve those. Jasmine, what would you do here, bud? Subtract 2. Okay, you would subtract 2. Now remember, one thing I'm going to tell you is this. Um, Ellie, I'm gonna, uh, hold on. I agree, subtracting 2. I'm going to take a time out right there. Don't lose that thought, okay? Ellie, you were going to add something. Exactly, x plus 2 to equal positive 7 because the absolute value of positive 7 is 7. So we're saying what's inside here should equal what's inside there. That would be one of them. And then back to Jasmine, she would say, well, to solve this, you would subtract how much then? You would subtract 2. Okay, so in this case, you would get x equals 5. But Ellie, to your point, gosh darn it. Okay, that should be better there, all right? Then, to your point right here, uh, also the absolute value of negative 7 would equal 7. So, Ellie, you were saying we also need to set x plus 2 equal to what's inside here of negative 7, all right? So, if I solve that, what's your solution when you subtract 2 from negative 7 there? What's negative 7 minus 2 more? Yep, negative 9. Good, kids. Okay, so that idea is going to resurface itself, and I'll show you how to handle that right there, but you're exactly right. If you have the absolute value of something equal to a positive number, you're going to get how many solutions here, kids? Two. Let me ask this question. What happens if you have this? I'm going to take the absolute value of x plus 2 to equal negative 4. What would you say is something like that? can't have it. It's not going to happen. It'll be no solution. All right. And there's going to be some cases where we compare stuff to negative. So back here, guys, we want to talk about this right here. It says, what does the absolute value of x minus 3 greater than 5 look like on a number line? Right? Let's just talk about this right here. Um, 
Somebody started throwing some values in here. Let's just do this. Let's just kind of think back to where we were. And instead of having an inequality sign in there, let's put an equal sign in here. If there were an equal sign in here, kids, what's, uh, what would you have to set the x minus 3 equal to? What two values? Just like the last example, what two values would you set it equal to? Say again, Kirsten. Let's do this, all right? Let's do it. So I would set x minus 3 equal to a positive 5. x minus 3 equal to negative 5. Okay, if I solve those right there, what values would you get for solutions? What values would you get for solutions? So x would equal 2 here. x would equal negative 8. Oh, hang on a second. Back up, back up, back up. What would this first one equal? 8, if you add 3, right? What would this one be? What would this be? Negative 2, wouldn't it? Right? I'm going to plot those two points up here. Plot negative 2. Plot negative 8. Now we'll talk, or I'm sorry, positive 8. We'll, we'll talk about what's going on here. This would be true if this was equal to something. Now, guys, I want to talk about this as this relates to an inequality. Okay? I want to talk about this as this relates to an inequality. And here's what's going to happen for you guys. Let's just pick some numbers left or right of these values here and see if they make this original inequality true. So, for instance... take the original problem here and I'm going to pick some points maybe to the left, to the middle, and to the right of our two set points where we were equal to 5 at. So let's pick maybe, I don't know, how about negative 6? Let's pick this point of negative 6 in here and put it in there. If I put negative 6 in, first of all, in your bracket here or in your absolute value bars, what's negative 6 minus 3 going to be? Negative 9, and the absolute value would turn that into what? Positive 9. Right here, positive 9. Positive 9. Is that greater than 5? It is. I'm going to put a true out here. Okay? And what this true is implying is the following. It's saying, hey, I went to the left of the point that we found that was equal to 5, and it said, I picked a point to the left of that involving an inequality, and this makes my inequality true. So in relationship to this point, what it's really implying for us is the following. It says, Anything to the left of this point would be a solution. And I'm going to highlight that and say, hey, you know what? That works. Okay, so 6. When I put 6 in there, 6, I'm sorry, negative 6, this makes us a true statement. How about we pick a value in the middle here? Let's say pick 0 to plug in. All right, so let's go back to that original inequality. Absolute value of 0 minus 3. See if that's greater than 5. What's the absolute value of 0 minus 3? I can't hear you guys. Absolute value of 0 minus 3. It'd be 3, wouldn't it? Is 3 greater than 5 right here, kids? No. So is this statement true or false? So when I plug 0 in, I get a false statement. So do I want to be shading in between these two points at all then? Are these points between... Uh, Negative 2 and positive 8 going to be solutions? Wouldn't. Okay. So then the last thing I'm going to do is check something maybe to the right of this. Say check 10. So we throw in 10. Whoops. <laughs> it looks like. Throw in a 10. Guys, is the absolute value of 10 minus 3 greater than 5? It is, isn't it? 
This turns out to be true. So this 10 is a true. And what this is going to imply is that we would shade everything to the right of 8. Now guys, when we did that problem, don't, don't you get a graph that looks pretty similar to some of the graphs you were dealing with in the last section? Some type of compound inequality? Quick question for you. Based on this sign right here then, that I just highlighted, would the dots that we started with, negative 2 and positive 8, would those be open dots or closed dots? They're going to be open, all right? So I'm going to fix that. And say, hey, you know what? We're open on those. This is kind of the idea today. We're going to have some problems that involve absolute value inequalities. You're going to look at, say, what's the graph look like? And then you just have to write a solution in compound inequality form. So based on our solution up here, guys, are we going to use the conjunction and or the conjunction or for this when we write our solution? Yeah. What would you write? Yeah, you're going to use an or, aren't you? Okay, so how about this first one? What's this first inequality going to be on the left? X would be what? Can. Shout it out to me, guys. You should know this. X is less than negative 2. How about your next one? There you go. Greater than 8. And in between the two, are you using or or and? Or. Or. There you go. All right. So this is kind of what we're going to be dealing with today. A lot of stuff here. We know how to solve absolute value equations. We know how to tell if, if, if a point is going to be open or closed. We know that when we get a graph of a compound inequality, how to write the solution for that. So basically what we're going to do here now is take everything that we've done and kind of put it all together today. So <coughs> this is kind of a setup for where are we going with this. Now, now, you're not going to have to go through the process like this. I've got a lot of shortcuts for you that are going to make things a lot easier for you. But this is kind of the idea. And uh, I think that if you follow the rules that we highlight and are able to refer to them again, again, the notes, very important for you. Make sure you highlight the stuff I want you to highlight, okay? Let's make sure phones are put away and you're paying attention, please. All right, so uh, roles for solving absolute value inequalities. Important stuff right here on page two. Uh, very important right here. All right, right here, guys. If you can decipher this table right here, things are going to be very simple for you today. It says the following. It says, if the absolute value of an expression is, what's the sign here, guys? Less than a positive or zero, they tell you what to do. Now, what I'm going to do uh, is this. I'm also going to add in this idea that, you know what, this could be less than or this could be less than or equal to as well. Okay, so it's going to be some form of a less than sign. It might be less than or equal to. You may just want to throw that in there. What's it say to do, kids? So set the expression less than the original positive value. Once you've done that, then it also says take the expression, what's inside the absolute value bar, and set it greater than a what? Negative. Okay. Let's see if we can't apply this right here. This is really an example one. Hey, uh, I'm going to just write this down. We're going to see an example in example one. It's going to be problem A. All right. This is where this rule is going to come into play. So let's jump down to example one and look at part A here and see what we come up with. Guys, do you have the absolute value of an expression right here? Do you have a less than sign like we had up here in this rule? Okay, and out here on the right, do you have a positive value or zero? You do, okay? So let's look at this right here. 
Um, what it says to do is to say, take your expression. So the expression inside the absolute value is x plus 3. It says take that expression, x plus 3, and set it less to the what, guys? So set less than 2. We'll look at solving that in a second. It also says for the second part, take your expression. So again, my expression is x plus 3. What do you do with your sign this time now, guys? According to the rule that I'm pointing at up here. Right here. Turn it to greater than. Instead of positive 2, now what? What's it say right here? Negative 2. Okay. That's the rule if you have the absolute value expression less than to a, a value here. And this is very easy to solve. What are you going to get here first? When you subtract 3, you would have x less than what, kids? Negative 1. Okay, that's going to be one solution. How about over here? x greater than negative 5. Okay. So we need to graph these two solutions right here. We need to graph this. We need to graph this. Now here's the deal. What I would encourage you guys to do is start with your points. I don't know if you're going to be shading an interval or if you're going to be doing a kitty whisker type thing that we've talked about in the past. But what I would encourage you to do is to figure out where negative 1 and negative 5 are going to be. So let's come down to this number line and look at this thing graphically. Um, let's see. Let's put... Uh, Let's put negative, let's put uh, zero clear over here on the right. Call us negative one, negative two, negative three, negative six. Let's label it like that, okay? Guys, what two values are you working with here, first of all, according to our solutions? Negative one, zero. Open or closed on both, open on one, closed on one, or closed on both? Open on both. Let's do that. Open on negative 5. Open on negative 1. Do you guys agree with what I've got there so far? All right. It says shade less than negative 1 but greater than negative 5. So my question is, is that an in-between or are we going to whisker that out? Beware. Less than negative 1, but greater than negative 5. Isn't less than negative 1 to the left? And isn't negative 5 to the right? So where am I going? In the middle. Yeah, in the middle. You bet. You bet. So kids, solution-wise for this, is this going to use the conjunction and or the conjunction or when you write your solution? This is an and. We have to satisfy two conditions. And the way that I write an interval is as follows. Put your smallest value on the left, negative 5. We know how to do this. Would I use less than or less than or equal to? Less than. X. Isn't this really the same as what you have right here? I just switched the variable and the value around. Isn't that the same? Okay. And then less than what, kids? Negative 1. Put your largest value on the right. There's your interval form for that. Okay. I want to get you a cheat sheet. I want to get you a cheat sheet back up there. That's your solution. That's what this is going to look like. Now, <coughs> up here, if you go back to your notes, when you have this condition right here, you're always going to graph uh, that if you had a number line like this, you would be shaded between two points. So you may just want to draw that in there and say, you know what? this is the case, or if this is the condition I start out with, you're going to end up with some kind of an interval, and you know what interval form looks like as a solution set right down here. Okay. All right, so let's look at case number two. It says right here, it says if the absolute value of expression is not less than a positive, but this time we're going to look at it compared to being greater than. And again, keep in mind, this might be greater than or equal to a positive. We'll look at that in a second. I, I need to stop and back up here. I want to go to this original problem right here again. 
Guys, pick me a value in the solution set right here. Give me a number that's in this solution set. Negative three. If I plug negative three in here, what's negative three plus three, kids? Zero, right? Absolute value of zero is still zero. Is zero less than that two right here? Okay, so that value in the shaded region works, which means everything in that shaded region is probably going to work, okay? I'll come back to the one I want to do. I actually want you guys to try part B on your own right now. Part B is just like part A. I want to see what you, oh, well, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Why is this different right here, guys? It's less than a negative. Okay, I have a good one for you. You ready for this? Go back up. We're going to jump around up here. We have the absolute value of an expression less than a what, guys? Negative. I'm going to write down, this is example 1B for us. Okay? Oh. If you have the absolute value of an expression less than a negative right here, what's it tell you? There is no solution. Reason being is this. Think about it. Absolute values will always end up what kind of value in the end? Positive. positive. Can a positive ever be less than a negative? No. So they're saying you're going to get some kind of a positive value over here and less than negative. Well, that's not possible, so therefore you simply say what? So if you have the condition, kids, where the absolute value of an expression is less than a negative, you simply write, <coughs> excuse me, no solution. No solution. Okay. I like those kinds of problems. Don't you? Okay. All right, well, let's roll the next page. Let's see if we can figure out some more of these rules. I'm going to be jumping back and forth between page two and page three, so you might want to have both of those open there. All right. Right here, guys, example 2A it says solve and graph each inequality. Here we're comparing the absolute value of an expression greater than what kind of a value? Positive. I'm going to go back to my rules. You tell me what to do. In example 2A, I have the example absolute value greater than a positive. If I could label these rules rule 1, rule 2, rule 3, rule 4, which of the rules would you apply there? solve this. Got it, Kirsten? Okay. Uh, absolute value of expression. I agree we have that. We're comparing it to a positive. What kind of sign do you have between here? Is it a greater than sign or a less than sign? Greater than sign. So, Kirsten, which one of these is going to have a greater than sign? Second. So we want to use rule number Two. Okay, we're going to use rule number two. Hey, here's the deal. Rule one and rule two are really the exact same thing. Okay, I'm going to kind of cheat this a little bit. Anytime you have positives right here, set, this, so set up the original problem without bars. And then the second part is just to switch the sign and change the positive to a, what's the rule say here? Negative. What you're really doing in anything is the following. If you ever compare to a positive right here, if you ever compare an absolute value to a positive, just rewrite the problem without bars. That's your first step. So we always have the fog. We're going to have to solve this as, I'm sorry, we're going to write this without bars, x plus 1, greater than or equal to 3. That's your first step. Since we're comparing to a positive, do you guys have any guess what the second inequality is going to look like in order to solve this thing? Negative 3. How about my sign here, Hunter? You bet. The other part is set x plus 1 less than or equal to negative 3. If you can remember the following today, if you can remember just this one thing today, I guarantee you things will be very simple. If you set an absolute value, I shouldn't say set, but if you compare an absolute value to a positive, you write the problem as it originally looks without the bars, and then the second part, you rewrite the problem, the expression stays the same, but you change a greater than sign to a less than or less than to greater than, and then your positive turns into a negative. If you can just remember those two things, write it as it originally is, and then switch this and this for your second problem, you'll be golden. All right? What do you get for this solution right here quickly? Oh, come on, guys. 
guys. I know it's early in the morning, but you know this. What's the answer here? What is it, Devin? Two. Okay, but write, give me an answer in inequality form. Oh, X. Yep. X plus. No, no, no. Sorry. That's You're all right. X is um, greater than or less than two. Greater than or? Oh, equal to. Equal to two. Man, you must have been up late last night or something. No, I was about like 10 after me. All right. What's the solution going to look like here, guys? X less than or equal to what? Negative four. Good. Okay. Go to your number line. On two, are you open or closed on two, kiddos? Closed. Closed. I'm going to pick maybe two to be, you know, I'm going to kind of put zero in the middle here. I'll put zero right here, so my two would lie right here. We're going to be closed on two. How about closed or open on negative 4? So if this is my 0, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. You say closed. I agree. Kiddos, help me. If I'm graphing solutions for this right here, if I'm graphing x greater than or equal to 2, am I going right or left of 2? So if I went right at 2, pretty good chance we're going right or left of negative four. You bet. Is this going to use the conjunction and or, or or? Or. So the only way I can write my solution is as follows. You have to write this as x is greater than or equal to two or x must be less than or equal to negative four. That is how going to work this. So guys, quick question. When you were comparing an absolute value expression to be greater than a positive, did you get an interval or did you get two infinite intervals? Two infinite intervals. So I'm going to go back to the front page of my notes. I'm sorry, the second page of my notes. And in the second page of my notes, I'm going to say example two, what happens is the following. A good one for us here was example 2A for this one. Your graph for any situation like this will be the following. It'll be, you're going to have something here and something here. You get two infinite intervals. So you may want to shade left and right like that and say, hey, we get kitty whiskers on that or something. I don't know why. I think I'd remember that easier in whiskers, don't you? Okay. Kitty whiskers. You want the word kitty prefaced in there, right, Fran or Braden? I can do that for you. <laughs> Guys, I don't think we realize how much we relied on Kayla to do the talking for us. When she's gone, everybody's pretty quiet. Did you notice that? Thank God. <laughs> Oh, come on now. We miss Kayla. Yeah. Is she ill right now? Is that? Not sure. Not sure? Okay. She was sick yesterday. Was she? Yeah. No. If you talk to her today, tell her Parsons said get well, okay? All right. Let's look at the next one. Guys, quick question. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Again, the rules that are important here. We have the absolute value of an expression compared to what kind of value? Comparing to a negative. So if I go back to my rules, we're going to be greater than a negative. Look at your rules. Right here, highlighted yellow. Absolute value expression greater than negative. Many. Is a positive always going to be greater than a negative? Okay. So if a positive is always greater than a negative, this is going to imply that everything works. What rule is really working here then? The last one. So I might write down this, this rule is applied to example... 2B in your notes. So right here, you're going to say there's many solutions. Guys, if there's many solutions, what's that look like on a number line? Many solution means everything works. So I'm going to shade everything. Yeah. I'm going to shade everything. 
That's what your solution looked like. All right, I'd like you to put a star by example C here quickly. So here's the deal, guys. Uh, what we've gotten ourselves into is applying rules where we have just an absolute value expression on the left and a number on the right. Now, in part C, is there an absolute value expression in the problem? That's my first question. Yes or no? There is. Okay, yes. But is there only an absolute value expression over there? No. Okay, this is the example where we are going to have to rewrite our inequality so it fits one of those forms in our cheat sheet. So the deal is this. I've got to get rid of this minus 5 first. So what are you going to do to both sides, kids? So we've got 3 times the absolute value of 2t minus 3 greater than, if I add 5 to 16, where does that put us? 21. Now, I still have something out in front of the absolute value bar. In order to be able to apply those rules, you have to have just an absolute value on one side. So what are you going to divide everything by now, kiddos? Divide 3 here. 3's will cancel. So what's my, what's my expression I'm going to work with now? You're going to have the absolute value of what? Absolute value of just 2t minus what? Greater than what value? 7, you bet. All right. So I need to figure out which rule I'm using. Well, first of all, am I comparing to a positive or negative? Comparing to a positive. So I told you, if you can just remember this, if you can just remember this, I'm going to make some room up here quickly. Give me a second. If you can just remember that after you've rewritten this, you basically keep the original problem without bars. You're going to say 2t minus 3 is greater than 7. And then the other one would be keep 2t minus 3. What should I do with the greater than sign? 2. And then change 7 to? If you can just remember that as it relates to a positive, any absolute value that relates to a positive, if you can just remember that rule today, I guarantee you life will be a lot easier today. So add how much to both sides? 3. So I've got 2t greater than 10 here. So t greater than what value for my first solution? One should be t greater than 5 on the first one. If I add 3 to the next one, help me out, kiddos. This becomes 2t less than negative 4 when I add 3 to both sides. So t will be less than what value, Braden? Negative 2. Very good. All right. Uh, open or closed on my ends? Open on both. So I'm going to try and figure this out. I like to have zero kind of towards the middle, so I'll count by ones. One, two, three, four, five would be right here. And we want to be open on that. Negative two would be to the left. Okay, kids. I need t values less than, oops, I forgot to label the negative two. I need t values less than negative two. So t values less than negative two right here. Go on left or right? Left. T value is greater than 5. Am I going left or right? Right, very good. How are you going to write your solution for this then? Or. Use an or. So we're going to say, you know what? In this situation, T is less than negative 2 or T is greater than 5. I think you guys are getting comfortable with this. Okay, I think you were a little skeptical at first. It was pretty quiet, but I'm hearing a lot more chiming in now okay I want you guys to tell me real quickly on D are you comparing to positive or negative negative so is that gonna be rule one or two or rule three or four okay so we've got absolute value expression all by itself that's a good thing do we have to rewrite anything on the left at all 
No. We're less than a negative. I'm hearing a lot of people yell no solution. Do we have an absolute value expression less than a negative? No. Perfect, guys. You've got this. I think we're good. I think we're good. Letter D, no solution. What's the graph of no solution look like? Nothing, nothing. nothing on it. There ain't nothing on it. All right, let's run to the last page here quickly then. Anybody need more time with this right here? Gaining confidence, and I love that. Very good. <laughs> Why don't you guys try those on your own quickly? See what you get for solutions. No graphing, just solve them, all right? Just solve them, all right? Take a couple of minutes. Take a couple of minutes. Yeah. There are always two solutions. Well, you want to look at your rule sheet right here, Wayne. Comparing the positives, this one and this one, right? So for those, there'll be two solutions usually. You need to figure out if you're using and or. And then down here, you're going to be comparing to negative, which either means no solution or many solutions. Okay. Take a minute and do those, all right? Obviously, in these bottom two, there's not a lot of room because it's either going to be many solution or no solution. Have you ever done the Ouija board? No.
Um, All right, guys. I want to make sure we have enough time to get through this. I'm looking around here. I've seen a lot of good stuff on the paper here. It looks like the conversations are good. It looks like uh, we've got a pretty good idea. Guys, I think that if you can kind of sum stuff up this way and ask yourself the following question. Are you comparing your expression to a positive or a negative in the top left one? Are we comparing to a positive or negative here? Positive 12, right? So all you need to do, you would solve x minus 4 greater than 12. And then the other one you would solve would be x minus 4. How do I rewrite the second part of this? How do I rewrite the second part of this? Change greater than to what? Less than. Change positive 12 to what? OK, when I solve these kids, I get x greater than 16. And I get x less than negative 8. All right? Now, guys, if you would look at your cheat sheet again, is this going to be a kitty whiskered graph, or is this going to be an interval graph? It's whiskers, so does that use and or or? So the way you're going to document your solution or, or verify your solution, I communicate it, I guess, is the better word. You would have to say x is greater than 16, or x is less than negative 8. That's what you would have to say there. All right, so we're good there. So the next one here, next one, you have 4x minus 6 compared to a positive. So you just rewrite the problem without bars. 4x minus 6 less than 12. And then the other part, you're going to write 4x minus 6. Change less than to what? Greater than. And then change 12 to what? Negative 12. So I'm going to save some time here. You would add 6 to this and then divide by 4. Uh, what would you guys get for that? X less than 4.5, is that right? And when I add 6 to this, I get 6. Did you guys get x greater than negative 1.5 here? When you solve that? OK, this is like example 1. Example 1, which is an interval. So I want to express my answer in interval form. So what's the smallest value here then? The negative 1.5 or the 4.5? So I want to express my answer as follows. Negative 1.5 less than x, less than 4.5, okay? Absolute value greater than a negative. Is the absolute value always going to be greater than a negative? So that's true. Many solutions or no solutions here? Many. This is saying the absolute value will be less than a negative, or positive less than negative. True that or false that? Oh, so Jacob, this would be what again? No solution. Good. All right, one last problem here quickly. Guys, uh, here's the deal. Since so you're buying a new truck, it says the table shows the value of cars at a different dealership, in this case, trucks. It says you're willing to pay the, what's the word here? Average price with an absolute deviation of it what? Okay, so they're saying whatever average price is, I'm willing to be $2,500 above that or $2,500 below it. This is kind of how car dealerships actually work. They say, what's the average price of trucks right now? We need to make a profit or we need to stay within a window where we're not going to lose too much money. It says, what vehicles meet your condition? Well, here's the deal. What this is really saying is we want the absolute deviation of at most how much, guys? The most that will deviate or the most that will stray away from the average is $2,500. Either $2,500 above or $2,500 below. So I want to keep that difference at $2,500 or lower. Okay? Here's what I need someone to do, first of all. All of these trucks that are listed up here, the Chevy Silverado, the Ford F-150, the Dodge Ram, the Nissan Titan, the Toyota Tundra, here are some base prices that we found. I need somebody to find the average of those prices quickly. Who would punch those up for me and find the average? Somebody find the average of those prices for me first. I'm going to write this down right here. Who's working on that for me right now? 
Okay, are you going on that too, Jacob? Whoever's punching it up, make sure you guys get the same number. Find the average prices of those trucks for me. Get a number, Ellie? Forty-three thousand eight hundred. Is that correct? Okay. Now, here's how you solve this. It says to recall absolute value equations are the following. You take x minus your average and set it equal to the deviation. Well, if we're doing an absolute deviation as it relates to an inequality, again, we want to be at most how far away from this average? At most, how far from that average? What was the value right here? 2,500. Okay, so we're going to say x minus my average. The absolute value of x minus my average, which was 2,500. has to be at most, or less than or equal to, if you will, $2,500. All right? X is going to represent the cost we'll pay for a truck. So to solve this, we would say x minus 43,800 would be less than or equal to 2,500. And the other inequality we would set up would be x minus 43,800. Change the less than or equal to to what, guys? Greater than or equal to what value? Negative 2,500. All right. Somebody add 43.8 to this one for me. It's 43,800 plus the 2,500. 46,000. Okay. We need to spend less than that, but we need to spend more than, how about solving this one? Negative 2,500 plus 43,800. I think that's greater than or equal to, oh, do you guys get 41,300 for that? Okay, so what this problem is really saying is this. We need to spend somewhere between 41,3 and 46,3. So between 41,300 and 46,300. Does this price of the Chevy fit that window? Does the price of the Ford fit the window? Is it between 41.3 and 46.3? Yeah, so this is going to work. All right, so the Ford will work. How about the Dodge Ram? Is that going to fit your window between 41.3 and 46.3? It is in between. Dodge will work. How about the Nissan? Is that going to fit your window? No. What about the Toyota? No. So given the conditions of this, given the conditions of this problem, given the conditions of this problem, which two prices would you want to use? Yeah. Would the Nissan work? No. Oh, what did I say? No? No. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. So the Nissan would work, right, Ellie? Yeah. Very good. Thanks. Yeah, these sellers work. So what are your choices going to be in that window? What's going to work? Ford, Dodge, and Nissan. Okay. Good. The following students please come to the office. Brock had a check. John Boyd.